everyone. Welcome to this special episode of Big Ben Secret Kitchen. Today we're here, here with our friend Thu and we're going to her Asian grocery store to show you some of the items I use at home as well as the items I will use in the Big Ben Secret Kitchen recipe. So welcome to the show Thu. Tell us a little bit about your store and what we can expect to see. Hello, Christine, and all the viewers out there. Welcome to Chongqi Market in Gainesville, Florida. Mm -hmm. We have served Gainesville and surrounding areas for more than 25 years with all their commonly used Asian grocery mm -hmm. needs. We carry Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, Taiwanese, Thai, Korean, Filipino, and more. Mm. We have fresh produce meat, seafood, exotic fruits, vegetarian and vegan products, as well as some houseware items. We try everything we can, including our shelves of fall, to make our store more convenient, even during this pandemic for our customers. We appreciate everyone's love and support during these trying times. And Team Chongqing will always strive to make our customers happy. And don't forget to support local small businesses. Well, thank you, Thu. Now let's have a look inside. So the first section here is the rice section. I love rice myself. I want to eat it every single day. Daily when I make rice, I will use this type of rice because it tastes so much like where I come from, the northeast of China. And sometimes if I want to eat healthier, I would choose those multi-grain rice. Another type of rice is really special. Sometimes I will use it, it's those sweet rice. These, after you cook it, it will taste sticky and a little bit sweet. So it's good for some type of dessert or you can simply wrap it around the pork rib and steam it, it tastes really good too. So. Every time when I come to an Asian grocery store, there is one thing I have to get. Chips! Those chips are basically my childhood. Take an example, this one. This just, just tastes like shrimp. And every time when I eat it, I just feel like, oh, I'm back to my childhood again. And this corn ones taste really good too. And another one I have to talk about is this, this those crab flavored sunflower seed. It's a really, really good snack during the day when I'm working or editing the videos. It just have so much flavor and you just can't stop eating it. And another thing is this, we always have this during the spring festivals. It's not a really traditional cookie and stuff. It's just a snack that everybody like in the family. So we always got a lot during the festivals and uh, this tastes like cookie but much more crispier than a cookie and they have so much flavor on it if you never try these if you ever happen to see one please try it one very important ingredient of asian cooking is tofu there is basically two type of tofu here one is the soft tofu one is the firm tofu so firm tofu is perfect for um, you just pan fried it and then eat it dipping in the sauce and just eat it like that. It tastes really good. And soft tofu is perfect for mapo tofu. And you have some spicy in it. If you like the mapo tofu, please let me know and I will show you how to make it. There's a whole section of the seafood. In Asian grocery store, you can always find different type of seafood from what you can see in a regular grocery store. For example, the squid. The squid tastes a little bit chewy, but it tastes really good together with the onions and jalapeno strings. If you'd like to know how to make it, please have a look in the channel. We'll have a recipe ready for you. And also I always buy these seafood mix because it's super simple, super easy to deal with. And I use it for my pasta, for my seafood, spicy seafood mix. It's just so 
so fast to prepare these compared to the fresh ones. Hey everyone, usually I don't get in on big fans videos, but this one I made an exception. I love coming to the Asian grocery store. One of my biggest faves of this store is the dumpling section. In an Asian grocery store, you're going to find tons of different brands and different flavors. Um, at a traditional grocery store, you actually might still find these, but they'll usually have one or two brands. Let's take a look at some of our favorites. So we have the Chinese spinach pork shrimp dumplings. One of our favorites is the pork shrimp sweet pea and sprout dumplings. We always pick up pick up a package of the pork uh, scallop shrimp dumplings, and then they also have the pork dumplings with shrimp flavor. Now, don't get too caught up on the brand. Um, if you are looking for a higher end, you can definitely tell it in the price. Um, but just look for flavors that you really like. Try those first, and try different brands of the same flavors, and see which ones you like. And also there are different ways to cooking the dumplings. Uh, most common ones here will be the pot stickers. And, but in China, the traditional way to make a dumpling is to water boil it. Um, it would taste different, but I promise you it tastes also fantastic. Agreed. And they have a big section of the Korean food. You can find kimchi here. It looked like this, so I always bought this for my Korean barbecue. It's a really, really good side dish. And another thing is they have the Korean style cold noodles. It's the package ready to eat. So all you need to do is just put it in the bowl. It tastes really good. It's a cold dish. It's super for the summer. You should try it. And another thing I really want to recommend is these rice vermicelli. These are super, super light and it doesn't have much calorie. It's good for your health. It will absorb whatever flavor you have in your dish. It will taste really good. The most common ingredients I use in Big Fan Secret Kitchen recipe for Chinese food, I, you can find it here. For example, the Chinese style soy sauce is same as the one you can get from the original grocery store, but I prefer this brand. And this is the vinegars I use in most of my dishes because I like vinegar. Another thing I use kind of often is this oyster sauce. This gives your dish a special flavor, make it taste rich, taste um, flavorful. And I would say it's the same functional as the chicken uh, bouillon. So it's just a Chinese version of it. I like this. Also, you can find a lot of Korean seasonings here. One of our favorite here is this Korean barbecue bulgogi seasoning. So when we find out that going out to have Korean barbecue, sometimes it get kind of pricey. So we figure out a way to make it at home. Just simply by season the meat with this stay overnight and the next day your Korean barbecue dinner is ready so you gotta have a try another one is the Korean style spicy paste this one those are perfect for the Korean uh, bibimbap mixed with rice a little bit of vegetables with the egg on top of it oh my god it tastes really good and also if you don't have a rice cooker or you're not so good at making rice, they also have this instant rice. All you need to do is put in a microwave for a couple minutes and then you will have a fresh cooked rice ready. There are one uh, seasoning I really like for the Chinese food is this, this soybean paste. This one is just so flavorful. You can just dip the cucumber in it and eat it like that it tastes already fantastic and also you can use to make the jajangmian uh, or you can use this to make mix with tofu it all tastes really good if you like to try it you can go into the channel and find a recipe about it 
Another one, this is the one I use for the mapo tofu. This is a spicy uh, bean paste with chili oil. All you need to do is to cook this with the tofu and you have a delicious spicy mapo tofu ready. Hey guys, me again. So I wanted to make sure that I got this next item in here because this is something we use every time uh, we have dumplings and that is the spicy dumpling sauce, all right? Uh, we buy two or three bottles of this every time we come to the grocery store. Uh, we use almost a whole bottle every time we eat dumplings. So yeah, we really love this stuff. Uh, you can actually eat it, um, dip it in the sauce just like this, or uh, you can add some of the different vinegars that Big Fan has talked about in this video. You can add those to it to kind of dull down the spicy a little bit, or you, they do have a version of this that is not spicy, and you could just use it as well. And then don't you have some curry that you use? Yes, there is there is one thing that I find it really tasty is this curry block. So this curry block is super easy to cook with. All you need to do is put whatever type of meat with um, carrot, potato, jalapeno maybe, onions, and you just put it in the big bowl and put a couple block of this in it and you will taste the curry flavor out of it. It's super easy and they have the spicy version and non-spicy version you can choose. So if you want to try it out, please have a look at the recipe that I have in the channel and I promise you, you will like it. Here's the Asian grocery store vegetable aisle. They have a lot of different type of mushroom here. For example, this oyster mushroom, it tastes really good when you deep fry it and eat with the salt and pepper. If you wanna try it, I'll tell you how to make it. And another thing is this king oyster mushroom. It look a little bit weird, but if you slice it up and cook with butter, salt and pepper, it could be a very good side dish on your table. There's one more vegetable I use it very often in my cooking is the baby bok choy. So as you can see, this is the bok choy you can find in a regular grocery store, and this is the baby bok choy. I use this one uh, simply cook with uh, mushroom or with pork, or even when I make some instant noodle, I put some in it. It just adds some vegetables to my uh, food. I just feel it's going to be a little bit healthier. There's one vegetable called lotus root. I like it so much. It looks like this. This is literally part of the root of the lotus. So how to, how to know if this is a good one or not? You simply look at the breaking point. If here it looks like this is sealed, then that's good. If it's broken and you can see the little holes there, that means when they pick it up from the pond, they might break it. There might be some uh, mud in it. It won't taste good after that. So this is lotus root. You can eat it in hot pot. You can simply uh, deep fry it with ground pork, or you can even just mix it with some spicy thing, cook it the same way as mapo tofu. It will taste really good too. And this is a radish. I can't find it anywhere else than an Asian grocery store. So I always come here to buy it to make my beef radish stew. You just simply peel it and cut into the cubes and make this stew with the beef and it will taste really good. Here comes to my favorite section, hot pot. So uh, basically hot pot sauce only have three different types. The first one is my favorite, is the spicy one, like this. So this is going to be the spicy uh, hot pot base. All you need to do is add water and water boil it. After it's boiling, put meat and vegetable into it, and uh, you can. It's ready to eat. Another type is tomato bait. Tomato based soup. This one doesn't taste spicy at all. It will taste like toma tomato soup. And um, personally, I don't, this is not my favorite, but some of the people really like this soup base. It gives a special flavor to those meat and vegetables. So if you can, if you want, you can try it out too. The third type of the uh, soup base for a hot pot is the mushroom soup base. So this one doesn't taste spicy either, but it have very strong flavor of 
the mushroom. So the soup base itself tastes really, really, really flavorful. And if you use this soup base, you can taste the original flavor from the meat and vegetables without um, any other flavor override it. If you're eating hot pot, one thing you need to get is the dipping sauce. So this is my favorite version of dipping sauce. Um, it's basically made of the sesame sauce and when I eat it, I'll add uh, garlic, vinegar, green onion into it just to give it more flavor. So it doesn't only taste spicy when you eat the meat and vegetables out of the hot pot. If there's another version of the uh, dipping seasoning is this dry version. This one just simply give you a strong flavor of the spicy and also have some uh, cumin flavor in it that give you extra flavor. Now it's almost the Chinese Spring Festival time. There are a lot of gift package available in the grocery store. So in Chinese Spring Festival time, we want to visit our friends and families. When we go there, we always bring some gift with us, such as these packages, some of the drinks, and uh, maybe some fruits, just to show our kindness and try to spend a um, good time with them. What's in those gift packages are basically Chinese candy, Chinese cookie, or Chinese style pastries. If you're into Chinese Spring Festival, just leave a comment below. I will walk you through all the traditions and most importantly, traditional food for Chinese Spring Festival. So one of the things I really like in my hot pot is the fish balls. You can find this in the frozen aisle and you can find it in different flavors. Some of them are lobster, some of them are fish, scallop, shrimp. You can find all kind of stuff. So to eat this, you simply boil it in your hot pot or um, sometimes when I eat my instant noodle, I'll put it into my noodles too. Or you can um, cook it with your vegetables. This is the instant noodle aisle. You can see all of these are different type of instant noodles from different countries. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, introduce some of my favorite. This one is recently become my favorite because they're so flavorful. And let's say this one is the spicy chicken noodle. It really tastes like chicken in it without chicken in it. So this is recently my favorite. And this one is really good too because this one doesn't have soup in it. This is a dry mixed noodle. And this is a little tiny package. It doesn't um, make you too full for the afternoon work or something. But this one is really good. It cooks super fast compared to all the other ones, but it's also very flavorful. And it has spicy ones and not spicy ones you can choose. There's one thing. This is recently become really famous online because this is the Korean's um, most spicy noodle. And this one, actually a lot of people doing the challenge online. And this has become my favorite when I really, really, really want some spicy food. So this is the Asian dry seasoning aisle. What I got from here uh, the most are these dried, dried chili pepper. And you can see I'm using a lot of this type of pepper in my uh, recipe because it doesn't give you a very, very strong spicy flavor, but it will give you a little tiny kick in there. Just add more uh, spicy flavor in it. And another thing I use a lot when I cook uh, a lot of meat, stew or uh, the meat dish, I will use this anise. So this one can help you balance the flavor of the meat and give it a, give your meat stew a richer flavor. And there's another thing you can find in this dry aisle is this, I call it clear noodle. So this one is dry too. All you need to do is boil the water and put it in it and uh, cook it until it's soft take it out, soak into the cold water, and then you can use this to make a really good 
coat dish. I like to use it with cucumbers and a little bit of fungus and use the sesame sauce with vinegars and soybean paste and just mix it up. Add a little bit of pepper in it. It tastes really good as an appetizer. So the sequence when I eat hot pot is meat, fish ball, vegetables, and noodles. So meat comes the first. In Asian grocery store, you can always find the thin sliced meat, especially for hot pot. It will come in a box and you can see it's really thin sliced and ready to make. And you can find not only beef, but lamb, uh, pork. Some place even have the beef tongue, but I personally don't like it. You can try it. So uh, I always bought a couple box every time when I come here, just put in the freezer. So I know there are always some meat ready when I suddenly want to have hot pot. Hey everyone, I just want to throw out a small disclaimer out there that there are a few Asian grocery stores out there. When you walk inside, you're going to have a heavy smell of fish. Uh, please don't let that deter you. A lot of them have the big fish aquariums that you can go in and you can pick a live fish or lobster or whatever out of the tank and sometimes that smell kind of wafts through the store. Please don't let that turn you off. Now this particular store you don't have that because they don't have the big tanks but they do have a nice big frozen section here of the fresh uh, fresh seafood, the fresh meats, they have the, the chicken feet which is a, a Chinese delicacy. Um, I actually had the opportunity to go to China and this was one of the things I got to try for the first time. It was absolutely fantastic. So uh, again, please, you know, don't let the small things deter you from going in and experiencing something new at one of these Asian grocery stores. So we have a look at all those Chinese food, Korean food, Japanese food. Now let's have a look at one uh, food from Burma. So this is the fish sauce from Burma. All you need to do is to mix it with hot water and then you can dip the vegetables, little peppers into it and then make a really good appetizer. Thank you for watching this special episode of Big Fan Secret Kitchen. I hope we answered some of your questions. If you have something you really like from an Asian grocery store, please share with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.